My friend, thank you for stopping by Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is Gloria Restoy. Don't just pass by, stay a while, gather with us, subscribe and click on the bell so that you're notified of every new video that I make. Be a part of our community, be a part of our family and your life will never be the same again as we learn the precepts and the foundational truths of the Word of God which have stood the test of time. Let us change the world together by changing ourselves first, allowing Him to change us. Thank you for your visit. Thank you for your subscription. It means a lot to me. Have a blessed day. What is good is evil. The Bible says in the book of Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 7.14, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. There is a quote by the gentleman that is one of the founders of the Goodwill. His name is William Booth. And he uh, was part of an interview. And the man that interviewed him asked him, what, is the, what, is, what do you consider to be the concerns for the next century? And Mr. William Booth responded, Religion without the Holy Ghost, Christianity without Christ, forgiveness without repentance, salvation without regeneration, politics without God, and heaven without hell. My friend, and here we are. This is the day that we have inherited. You see it all around you. You see the conditions of the heart, divisions between black and white, the desire to defund a system of order and discipline by taking away the authority from the hands of the police. A man does not know how to be a man. A woman doesn't know how. There is a sexual confusion and a mental confusion that has created double-mindedness and the desire to kill babies in their mother's womb. What is right is wrong and what is wrong is right. Science continues their never-ending quest to prove God wrong. There is no basis to, not, to another hypothesis other than a divine creator. Cloning humans without feelings continues to be a quest. The failure would be in the lack of spirit that is derived by God in his eternal love. His breath in our lungs allows us to see a brand new day. We took God out of the schools and we saw the demise of the institution of marriage. The divine plan of God as a symbol of his church, a bridegroom and his bride multiplying and creating beautiful children to fill the earth. The evidence of God's glory in creation, human beings with a body, with a soul, with a spirit, with complete autonomy to use his will freely to choose the path he wants for his life and a heart with a void that despite all the free choosing the ultimate gift would be to choose God in his quest for happiness Jesus Christ is the only hope for humanity 
May we let him back in, into every area of our lives. Yes, we are at war. And war rages overhead. Just as there is blessing, there is cursing. Just as there is a God, there is an enemy called Satan. Just as there is purity, there is wickedness. And we see wickedness all around us. Evil hides in the shadows to attack the vulnerable places in our lives. We cannot give access to wickedness and to darkness in our lives. One little crevice, the darkness, will force its way in. We need to be vigilant. We need to be gatekeepers of what we allow in our minds, what we allow in our eyes, what we allow in our ears. We need to have our family read the Bible, have family time, have the kids go to church and go to youth group, have them do sports, between God's sports and a community of fellow kids, fellow young kids that can speak into their lives, there is hope for our future generation. But if we take out God from the equation, from these young people that are really going to be, the men and women that are going to lead this country, future presidents, future congressmen, future mayors and senators, future scientists, future teachers, if they're devoid of God, if they're devoid of empathy, if they're devoid of anything that is good, pure and noble, what hope is there for humanity? Here, here's what's absolutely true. The enemy cannot take your value or your voice or your choice to follow Jesus. He cannot diminish your worth, your calling or your influence. He cannot separate you from God's love. He can't take away God's promises and he cannot stand that you are so dear to the Father's heart. In due time, he will get what is coming. And if we got to the end of the book, we know the end of the story. The story ends in victory. So for now, stand firm, believe and give thanks to the God who made you. He trains you for battle and intends to use you beyond your wildest dreams. Let us look to him today. Ephesians 6, 10 through 11 says, A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. Lord God, let us pray. Lord God, we thank you, Father, in your precious Son, Jesus' name. This world my Father, this world has changed a lot, Lord God, in the last 15, 20 years. And Father, as the years roll by, things will probably get darker and we ask that you help us to humble ourselves and pray, that you help us Father, and teach us to make you a priority in our lives, Father, so that we can hear from you, Father God. So you may heal our land, Father. Father, but 
In order for our land to heal, we must heal first, all of us, because the land needs healing, but we all need healing, God, because it starts with our heart. Help us to see, help us to read your word, help us to get to know you more. Help us, my Father, to go to church and to put you first. Help us to see what is true and what is noble and what is right. Help us to prioritize and put you first in our lives, my God. My Father, as we renew our minds with your word, our mind, O oh God, that is so often full of lies, full of judgments, my Father, may you cover our minds always by the grace and the mercy of your glory, by the love and the forgiveness and the redemption that comes from your promise of your goodness and your love. You are a master in redeeming that which is ugly, which is dirty, which is lowly, and make it into a beautiful and shiny gem, into a beautiful and shiny trophy to stand for your glory. Father, give us the courage. Give us the courage of our anointing, the courage of our calling, the courage of our faith, my Father, to never renounce you, never forsake you, never reject you, Father, may we always be faithful to you as you are to us. May we always be the testimony with our daily living and not with our daily talking, but may our life be the testimony that this world needs, Father. May we be the Christians that other people want to emulate. May we be the Christians that people can say and feel and think that Christian is truly a devoted disciple of Christ, a devoted man or a woman. That our testimony is seasoned with salt, it's seasoned with grace and not with double-mindedness that with one group we are holy rollers and and kingdom-minded and then with another group we are speaking trash like they speak trash or with another group we are upholding and defending the rights of a woman to kill her baby and and all of these things father that require healing to our hearts, my Father. May we recognize, Lord God, that putting our trust and depending on man to validate us or to make us feel important or special or that we belong, the heart is fickle, my God. Father, help us to put you at the forefront of our minds and of our hearts and of our souls. My God, may we love you with all our minds and all of our strength and all of our being, God. May we, Lord God, speak, my Father, and be and behave and live, giving you glory always. Father God, help us to maintain our testimony, to be strong in the faith, my God, 
to stand firm, to not be shaken or stirred by the, the, the different devices of the enemy and the agendas and the doctrines and the beliefs and the religions and of this culture, of this world. And in essence, it's all man-made. My Father, and the Bible says that we all fall short of the glory of God. We want God-made, Lord. We want God-anointing, God-covering. We want God's grace, God's mercy. We want God's restoration and healing and God's transformation. Because self-help without God is no help at all, God. Help us, my Father, every single day to realize that we have character defects and we have weaknesses in character. May we bring them to the altar every single day, God being vulnerable, taking off our mask and saying, God, look at this mess. I am this, I am that. And when I feel like this, I behave like this, like this, like that. And Lord, I'm asking you to heal me from this. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be this. I don't want to speak this. I don't want to behave like this. Take away the anger, take away the unforgiveness. Help, help me to heal at the feet of the cross. Help me to heal and to forgive my brother that has offended me or that has hurt me. So that I am able to go in my father, to my father, in secret, in my, in my prayer closet, which is the temple, which is me and you, Lord God. You and them, you and humanity, you and the world, Father, that our prayers are answered, Lord, as we forgive one another. My God, we need you. We need you desperately in the world that we are living in. We need you desperately, my Father. And we ask you not to leave us alone. Don't leave us. Don't abandon us. Don't leave us to our own devices, Lord God. I know that you respect your creation and you can never go against your essence by violating free will, my Father. But help us, God. Speak to us and show us and tell us this is the way. Walk in it, as you always do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. In the name of your precious Son, Jesus, amen and amen.